Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California here at Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage you to visit us online at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can subscribe in the link above this video. Or alternatively, if you want a downloadable format that you can uh, watch or listen to on your uh, device of choice, uh, you can uh, visit us on the web, quicksurf.com. And in the show notes for every episode, I have a subscribe section and uh, links that allow you to subscribe to an MP3 version or an Og Vorbis version or a standard definition H.264 and a high def H.264 version. So you can uh, subscribe to any one of those in iTunes or in Zune, or if you have an Android phone or an iPad or an iPod Touch or an iPhone or something of that nature, you can uh, subscribe uh, using uh, your podcatcher of choice on any of those devices or an Apple TV or a Roku, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, the, the video uh, and audio, I try to make as a universal format as possible so that uh, you can listen and or watch it however you like. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into the cool stuff that I found for this episode. Um, starting off over at Uber Gizmo, uh, I saw this article, uh, according to a job listing at Apple, um, Siri for Mac could appear in OS... 10.9. This is kind of interesting. Now, you know, if in the iPhone series has been around since the iPhone 4, and quite frankly, it's done nothing but get better over time as Apple has released new versions of iOS. I wouldn't be surprised in the least if Apple starts to release Siri for uh, the Mac platform, uh, specifically uh, the uh, MacBook Pros. Um, the iMacs, eh, maybe, but MacBook Pros, definitely, uh, maybe the iMacs, maybe the Mac Pros. It'll be interesting to see uh, what they do with that. But uh, there's a possibility that it could be showing up in the next version of OS X, which is kind of nice. From Electronista, rumor has the next iPad main display reaching 324 pixels per inch. The current iPad mini has the same 1024 by 768 display as the first gen iPad, first and second gen iPad actually, and uh, it's it's looking like uh, the uh, next version of the iPad Mini will have a Retina display, uh, the same 2,048 pixels by 1,536 pixels that the current full size iPad has. Um, that's going to be a lot of resolution in that tiny little screen. Quite frankly, I, I'm excited. That's going to look awesome. Um, you know, I mean, I've got the iPhone 4S with its display, and it's a pretty good display. I mean, you literally cannot see the pixels in that display. And even when it's rendering lower resolution content and scaling it up to that resolution, it does a really good job of of uh, of, of does a really good job of smoothing it out and making it look nice. So, really interesting to see uh, what. Apple uh, does with the next iPad and iPad mini. Over at Uber Gizmo again, the Samsung Galaxy S4 is arriving this March 15th. It, uh, is going on sale in April, according to the rumor mill. Um, I'm, you know, I don't typically follow um, the mobile phone market. I, you know, simply because it's just not really a point of interest. But given the Apple Samsung clash that's been going on in the courtrooms, uh, the Galaxy S4 uh, it looks to be a pretty interesting upgrade from the S3 that you can currently get, so it'll be uh, pretty neat when it shows up. Um, also, over at Gizmodo, I saw this really cool article. <laughs> Those of you who are fans of Thor, the movie, and you know the Avengers, and the new Thor movie that's coming out um, in the near future, as well as Thor in the comic books, there's an article here over at Gizmodo. Thor's hammer weighs as much as three billion elephants, says Neil deGrasse Tyson. Now, those of you who are familiar with Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's a, a fairly popular uh, 
uh, scientists, well, I'm using air quotes here, but he, you know, he, he's pretty popular in the media. He has a, a podcast, you know, you see him on TV quite a bit, uh, pretty interesting. Um, he tweeted it out, which is kind of nice. 300 billion elephants, elephants. Uh, so we'll see, uh, you know, what, you know, I mean, obviously Thor's hammer is mythical, but still nonetheless, it's, I thought this, that was like a cool little piece of trivia, uh, over at gear live. I saw this article. R I double a has Google takedown requests near 10 million takedown requests. That is a lot of takedown requests for one organization to another organization. Really? 10 million? Something seems awfully wrong to me if you have submitted that many takedown requests. I don't know. Maybe there's something wrong with your business model that makes people want to steal your stuff because it's too expensive. That might have something to do with it. Who knows? From Ars Technica, uh, a reseller is claiming that a new MacBook or a new Mac Pro is coming. Uh, Tim Cook recently had some commentary on that, saying that uh, you know the Mac Pro has not been forgotten by Apple. There, there is something that uh, that uh, users of that market segment will will definitely uh, uh, appreciate that Apple will be releasing at some point in the future. Um, you know. I, I, you know, the Mac Pro hasn't been updated in a while, and I, even at the current hardware, it's pretty burly. You know, I mean, it's pretty burly. And so to see Apple do something um, that will be an upgrade to that, I mean, even though I admit it does need an upgrade, the hardware, you know, that they have is a little long in the tooth, even though if you order the high end version that's $24,000 or some insane you know, number like that, it's still a pretty burly machine. Um, it's a beast of a machine. Uh, you know, it'll be pretty interesting to see what Apple, uh, it comes up with it, but you know, you, with, with Apple, you never know until, you, until they actually release it. So we'll see from Gizmodo watch Siri turn into a home automation master with the help of Raspberry Pi. That's right. With home automation being all the rage these days, it was only a matter of time before Siri got her little occasionally holier than thou claws into the action. All it took was YouTube user Elvis impersonator, a Raspberry Pi and enough trust in Siri's goodness to believe that she won't devolve into a HAL 9000 wannabe. And the results, if you watch the video are quite frankly, pretty awesome. Uh, you know, check it out by all means. This is something that I'd love to do myself. Uh, you know, just, just because it's awesome and it's cool. And, you know, I mean, it's same thing, like, you know, in the Iron Man movie series and like even in Avengers and stuff, you know, with Jarvis, you know, it's like, I would love to have something like that where, you know, it's just a voice activated home automation system, you know, a lot like Star Trek, you know, when you're on the enterprise and you just computer and, you know, and you tell the computer to do something, and it does it. Um, you know, this isn't quite as awesome as that, but it's still for home automation. It's still pretty, pretty neat. From Engadget, the Australian High Court rescues Google says it isn't responsible for the content of ads. Well, that's a relief. You know, well, why would Google be responsible for the content of ads? They're being paid to display them. They're not being paid to come up with whatever the content is. I mean, come on. This is no brainer. Uh, an amateur astronomer has helped Hubble snap this galactic monster. There's a picture up here. This is over at Gizmodo. A again, as always, everything I've talked about is linked up in the show notes for this episode over at quicksurf.com. Uh, Hubble has joined forces with two amateur astronomers to capture a monster, and it may be one of the most beautiful four-armed giants ever seen. It looks spectacular. I'll be uh, looking to make this a, uh, a a background on my desktop in the not too distant future. Um, pretty nice. That's all I got to say about it. Uh, how many of you have been following the Curiosity Mars rover stuff going on over at NASA? Well, Curiosity rover has hammered into its first Mars rock, which is pretty neat. Uh, Mashable has the article here. I've got a nice picture up. Uh, definitely check it out if you want to follow that. Awesome Lego Gundam must become an official set now. I thought this was awesome. I'm kind of a Lego enthusiast, and I've got Lego around the house uh, for my uh, my offspring, if you will. 
And, um, not that I'm going to get into that or anything, but, uh, I saw this and I was like, there's no way I can't talk about this. I mean, it's not nearly as good as the big giant, impossibly giant Gundam in Tokyo that, yeah, but it is, uh, pretty neat nonetheless. I mean, it's like Lego definitely has to make this into an official set. It, it, it looks awesome. Got to check it out. Uh, there's a nice little how a router really works article over on Mashable. I thought that I would link it up in the show notes for those of you who uh, have ever wondered how, you know, an internet router slash firewall uh, works, um, you know, the, the type that you get for your home internet where you have your, your cable modem and then a router that you plug into it and it serves Wi-Fi to your rest of your house and that sort of thing. Well, this has got a nice little write-up on how all that stuff works. Pretty neat, actually. Um, definitely check it out. Over at Gizmodo, watch the spellbinding process of how Nikon makes its lenses. I thought this was pretty neat. Uh, it's a nice little video. You can check it out. It's quite mesmerizing. Just to, Have any of you uh, watched the How It's Made videos on, um, on Science Channel and Discovery Channel? Right along, right up that alley. So check it out. <laughs> From i4u News, Future Mark has unveiled a new 3D Mark benchmark for gamers. That's right. There's a new benchmark out there for uh, gaming platforms and gamers. Definitely check it out. Uh, run it against your system. See how much it sucks. I know mine does. Uh, and the last story that we have over at Make. In their blog, the Raspberry Pi camera module is almost ready for its close-up. For those of you who are Raspberry Pi fans, and we know there are a lot of you out there, uh, this is pretty neat. It's a nice little camera module that uh, hooks up to the Raspberry Pi. They're just finishing it up, and it should be available here in the not-too-distant future, the next month or two. And, uh, you know, definitely check it out. I'll be interested if any of you get it, uh, you know, let me know, shoot me an email geekinator at quicksurf.com. And with that, uh, that's pretty much all I have for this episode. As always, everything I've talked about is linked up in the show notes. You can find those online at quicksurf.com and just uh, look for the episode, uh, for this episode, TGB 0507, TGP 0507. And, um, you know, you can subscribe to the show and uh, all of the links that uh, are there linked up to everything I talked about. With that, I'll see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye. <laughs>